everybody. I'm Jason, and this is a track breakdown of our new song, Stars. I'm in my sh- Chicago home studio, my sh- 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 Chicago home studio, uh, called Spider Worldwide. And uh, I'm going to be peeling back some of these tracks, soloing a few things, talking about songwriting, and just getting into some of the specifics of the song, Stars. Why not, uh, why not just start with the basic tracks? Stars above, I get too much, my heart ain't strong enough for me. Just drums, bass, guitar, all playing together. Um, each of us are in a different room. We rented a studio. We rented a studio here in uh, Chicago called Jam Deccan. Uh, I was kind of set up in the control room in front of the console and all the gear. We were separated, which is honestly kind of one of the crazy secrets of recording is just isolation. So if any of us messed up so bad, we could punch it in or recut it or whatever and kind of makes the whole recording process a little less stressful, which uh, is nice. And I think that's the whole point. Like you want to feel comfortable and play good and when you're playing well, the songs sound good. And so getting a good performance, that's like number one, obviously. Um, Tip number one, play well. Play, uh, play like your life's on the line. Um, this song actually started as a drum machine loop that sounds like this. A little 404 beat that I made um, with some Oberheim drum samples that I ripped on the internet. Um, so we started writing with this, but then we kind of realized that the drums, which are right here, they're just doing the same thing, so eventually we threw out the drum machine. But to keep to keep kind of that feeling um, and that sort of texture, which I felt like was kind of important to the song and the sort of like driving down the highway kind of feeling, we actually use those drum samples that were in the drum loop, but I layered them on top of Eric's performance, so it was just an added texture that kind of hinted at a drum machine rather than uh, was a drum machine. Just the triggers, or the samples, rather. But, you know, keep them pretty low so it's just a little extra texture. And it helps the samples for the kick. For rocking more like, I guess, aggressive, fast songs, it really helps in our setup because the floor tom just doesn't have some of that low midi punch that like a kick drum has. It's just it's a, just a different instrument, and that's you know the nature of our band is we have a floor tom and snare. So sometimes for the r- record's sake, you do a little textural manipulation to sort of provide the little extra oomph that you need. I feel like this record in general is kind of a drum record so I spent a lot of time um, making sure those sounded good and typically Eric has always kind of complained that he couldn't hear the drums on the record so it's like all right my goal is to make sure that these drums are like up front and center. I guess another side note is that we recorded this to have someone else mix it so kind of one of the big things one of the big my the goal of my job was basically to make something that would translate to this other person and whoever opened up that file would be able to like understand what we were trying to achieve and also I wanted to give them options so that they were able to have um, you know agency and creativity in the mixing process and so they could put their two cents into it and so I wanted to give people options I used a, a lot of mics on the drums I did tops and bottom on the tom top and bottom on the snare a couple different kit mics out front, a trashy mic. The trashy mic kind of sounds like this, just blowing one mic out just for fun. Sometimes you might want to use it, sometimes you just turn it off. And honestly, you know, this is this is where I come from. Just blow everything up in a preamp uh, and, and that's art, baby. Okay, moving on, moving on. We got these Tom overdubs, which were one of my favorite parts of the production. 
for this song where it's kind of linear um i think because we wrote it to this drum machine that is sort of this you know car driving down the highway bruce springsteen like g- grab onto my engine kind of laser beam we wanted to accentuate different parts and also you know signal changes in the song and also add a little bit of extra energy because eric is just holding this beat down you know he only has two hands so throw a little time in there and then all of a sudden we get into the chorus and there's all this exciting toms that are about to fall apart and it also kind of preempts the vocals where it it's this big bold thing and then when it disappears it's like oh here's this little hole that the vocals can now jump into so i guess if we're talking about overdubs let's listen to some of the guitar overdubs fun making that guitar line. Kind of the big job of a lot of these guitar overdubs is just to make the chorus special and feel bigger even though you might not hear a lot of this stuff when it's in the mix. Like in context, here's it with everything. A lot of stuff just kind of reinforcing the chord changes and also uh, I think creating just more space but then also pulling back so we're not getting in the way of like what the vocals are saying and that's kind of been my job this whole record it was just like how can I add textures and depth and dimension to the song without like stepping all over like the main melody like either the guitar line or the vocals and Rather than just have a you know spaghetti pile of a bunch of different guitar lines weaving all in and out of each other, how can I just kind of like really quietly lift all this stuff up and maybe someone listening to the song wouldn't even know we were doing that? It's just something maybe if you're like listening for it or something like this is my first time using the legendary uh you know, large diaphragm condenser mics for vocals. And basically, like, recording for me has just been learning and trying new things. And so we're in the studio, and we had the opportunity to use these kind of, you know, fancy pants mics or whatever. And so I read a little bit about them on the Internet ahead of time and um, just gave it a shot. And I think that's one of the fun things about recording is just learning new things and new tricks and not being afraid to try things out. And it's kind of scary when you're in the studio because you're like, you don't want to fuck it up, but uh, it's okay to fuck it up. Try a little, try something out, and it took a little while to learn exactly how much you know volume these things could take without making them sound all distorted. But um, I think it's like my favorite way that my voice has probably ever sounded on a recording. And thank you to the two fifty one clone that I was using. So this is what it sounds like with a little verb. Stars above, I get too much, my heart ain't strong enough for me, I can't keep up, my heart ain't Uh, strong, oh, stars above, I get too much, my heart ain't strong enough for me, I can't keep up, my heart ain't strong enough for So not really too much going on it's mostly just a vocal and a double and mostly just paying a lot of attention to how close to the mic uh i was standing just so i could get that the i had a dynamic uh, cardio mode or whatever so the closer you're standing to it the better the bass response and so like finding that sweet spot where the voice sounded full but not too boomy or muddy or whatever and i kind of tend to like a lot of like low end and vocals anyways so I guess uh, maybe a cool place to go next would be the ending of the song. It just kind of felt redundant to just like do the same chorus for a third time. And we tried a bunch of ways and tried not doing the chorus, but there was no real good solution. So one day I had the idea we could just slow it down and then have it occupy this entirely new space. So that's what we tried. 
And let's see here. This is basically what it sounded like when we wrote it. Goes halftime. Matrix. Matrix slow-mo kind of vibe. And then um, that was fun, and we kind of were singing in a completely different way too, so it just kind of gave like a new place for the song to go that felt kind of exciting, and it also is insanely fun to do live because uh, you get to pretend like you're in slow motion or something. So... Already kind of had this nice warpy vibe, and then we added, I added these guitars. And really that just kind of puts it to the next level of this like entirely new environment, because before it was like, oh yeah, wow, there's this like tempo change, but to really signal that there was like, this drastic difference. I was like, I think it needs to be like more of a moment. So I make all these dreamy guitars that all are doing the same thing, but just creating this chimey reverby pool with which to swim through. And then there's this bass synth as well that just is really subtly in there. Some things like the bass synth is like stuff you're not really going to necessarily like perceive, but it's just this a effort to build a textually diverse environment that just supports the vocals and the main melody. And hopefully you don't, my goal is like that you don't necessarily notice everything, but you perceive it nonetheless. And it makes it fun to listen to. Like, a, you know, a bunch of fun things to look at on your highway drive kind of thing keeps it keeps it interesting well everybody thanks for joining me for this track breakdown and maybe we'll do it again soon